Welcome back to your favorite show, Identity Zoom Show, where we're talking about public finance and how it affects you and me. Uh, I'm joined back in the studio by Janet. Janet, welcome back. Thank you very much. And Nadi. I stay with Honorable Mona. Honorable, thank you again for taking part thank in you, this to, to educate the nation. Mm -hmm. And we cannot talk about issues of public finance and not talk about parastatals. Why is that important, Janet? Thank you very much, Nyari. Um, parastatals are actually part of the government. Um, parastatals, they fall within different line ministries, depending with which one, uh, which parastatal it is. Um, and therefore, it means they receive uh, funds from the government from the National Fiscus or from the Treasury or the Consolidated Revenue Fund. Therefore, their management and their day-to-day -day business is actually our business as citizens because they're actually utilizing the allocated resources um, from the National Fiscus. Therefore, we have to talk about how they also manage mm -hmm. uh, their, the resources that they receive, um, which includes both the property, uh, but also finances that they receive. Thank you so much, Janet. I think that's so fantastic because you've just actually taught us how they are benefiting from Shambota Rajasha, whether it's revenue that government is getting mm. from borrowing yes. or from taxes yes, or from yes. wherever. Actually, sometimes the government borrows actually for parastatals, parastatals what is called the publicly guaranteed debts. And mm. just now as a participating citizen, honorable, I'm just like, okay, so we get funding and I spoke about the Auditor General uh, uh, reports that have actually highlighted in the past the issue of mismanagement and in terms of expenditure. It leads me to my next question. Who monitors my parastatals, Honorable? Uh, thank you very much, um, Nyari. Uh, Parliament is mandated to monitor, like I said earlier on, in terms of Section 299 which does the oversight. And there's Section 300 of the Constitution whereby Parliament sets limits, borrowing limits. And I'm glad to say Janet touched on the issue of uh, parastatals getting funding from the Consolidated Revenue Fund. And this is well captured in Section 305, where it talks of the budget, whereby the parastatals, they get the funding from there. So in terms of monitoring, it's the purview of Parliament to monitor um, Parastatals. And I'm glad to say the way we are structured as parliament, we've got engines that drive the business of parliament, mm. which are committees. And uh, apparently I chair the budget, finance and economic development. Oh, really? And we also... So we've got the right person to blast <laughs> all the questions. <laughs> yeah. so you can, I've got your so, back. <laughs> and this is a pre-budget uh, pre committee. Mm -hmm. It focuses mainly on the policies. And we've got a post-budget uh, committee, which is the public accounts committee which does the business of monitoring the Auditor General's reports. So the issue of the, the parastatals, and we've got some of the topical parastatals that are being, uh, uh, that have been tabled uh, before Parliament in terms of the reports, the audit reports, and this is the business of Parliament. So the oversight rules uh, extends to, to Parliament. And so I am so privileged to have you today and in the seat and say, so how is it that we've had so many scandals, Honorable, um, if Parliament was doing its job of monitoring and making sure that uh, the Auditor General, all the Auditor General's uh, reports have been implemented, why are we sitting where we are? How could we also say that we've got members of Parliament that haven't been doing their job? Uh, thank you, Nyari. I, I can say... In the past, that is. Yeah, okay. What I can say, we've got what we call the doctrine of separation of powers. So in terms of uh, parliament, it does, it makes laws and does the oversight and the representative role. And we also have the executive that formulates policies and the judiciary, which does uh, and, um, the enforcement of the laws. So at the end of the day is, if we do our oversight role, it's now up to, to the judiciary to enforce the laws. So at the end of the day, we can say like what you're saying now in terms of the, uh, the, the parastatals, we, the reports are before parliament now. And we are going through the, the reports through our public accounts committee. And whatever findings we get, we then table in the august house. And then it will be up to the executive now to enforce uh, the, the, what the findings of the committee. So I can say uh, this is what we do as parliament. And truly speaking, we are doing our oversight role without fear without favor oh, and uh, I, I can say as of now with the new dispensation, you can see that parliament is up to, to, to scratch in terms of 
doing his business. I am just hoping because I, I mean, because I'm excited because we are all participating in mm. this, and I'm so grateful for this conversation because a few days ago, or oh, we have witnessed the young people or part citizens participating, you know, bringing out some names of of things or people or institutions that they feel like the pal that they they haven't they've been engaging in corrupt activities and other things and we are waiting to see what action is going to happen but i want to come to janet and say we have had the overall the oversight role of um the parliament mm -hmm. um but what are some of the principles that um, that can be engaged in both maybe by parliament, by citizens, whoever, to make sure that whatever we want to see happening in public finances, in managing parastatals happen. Um, okay, thank you very much. So um, I would take it that um, when it comes to how the best practices actually in running parastatals that the citizens should know about mm -hmm. and also what then parliament could play a role is one, it's one to do with the appointment of the boards of parastatals because parastatals are actually run by boards. Mm -hmm. And um, Auditor General's reports have brought out a number of issues around corporate governance. Mm -hmm. So there is need for a transparent process in terms of appointment of boards uh, to parastatals. Um, the second thing, uh, parastatals, they're supposed to submit regular financial reports um, to their line ministries. Thereafter, the line ministries have to submit reports, budget performance reports, or actually the financial reports to parliament, uh, which is something that should take place actually regularly and properly, actually proper financial reports should be tabled in parliament or in the National Assembly. There is the issue of um, where also citizens could uh, monitor and raise issues around procurement, mm. I think, which is a major issue actually right. around mm -hmm. all the issues mm -hmm. that you're talking about, Nyari. I think they also boil down to the issue of procurement, procurement regulations. There are procurement regulations that are set out and that must be followed, actually. Mm -hmm. And the Auditor General support has also brought in quite a number of um, issues and concerns around um, around the procurement regulations right. uh, issues. So this is also an area and an opportunity uh, which I believe that um, uh, citizens and also parliament could play a role in terms of ensuring that parastatals are sticking to uh, procurement regulations uh, that are set out, um, but not to ever emphasize again the issue mm. of uh, the board, I think, corporate governance, mm. uh, which is really a, a major issue and a key issue, the issue of tendering, so mm. who is tendered to, mm. you know, these are some of those yeah. be best yeah. practices yeah. that should be very clear and mm. out there. So there must be clarity in terms of who is, who is composed of the board, who is com what's happening in the procurement, and the citizens have to know and they have to seek for this information. It could be through the parliament, um, it could be actually asking uh, the minister or working with different players, um, including the NGOs that you have highlighted in terms of getting information. And mm. I think it's an issue of access to information to all this so that we can uh, hold accountable. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Honorable, as you end just in 30 seconds, Janet is, has mentioned the issues of reports. And I'm thinking that while we have all this, that's tubuka tubuka, the corruption, the mismanagement, the remaparasatronga chitauro, my reports are kuwia. What is it that we're going to see different moving forward um, to make sure that we don't have the recurrence of the problems that we've seen in the parasitals before? Uh, thank you very much, Anyari. Uh, maybe uh, I'm glad to say Janet touched on a number of uh, issues here. And in terms of reports, we've got the Public Entities and Corporate uh, Governance Act, Chapter 10, 31. It talks about see, the parastatals bringing reports to Parliament and the reports being tabled in Parliament. And like I earlier on alluded to, the issue of the relevant committee to take up those reports mm. and make a, a table report in the Parliament. So at the end of the day, she also mentioned the issue of procurement. I'm glad to say recently His Excellency Comrade mm. Emerson Damsom launched the issue of PRAS, Public Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe, right. which takes uh, the issue of uh, procurement in terms of government departments, institutions, mm. parastatals. And uh, I'm also glad to say that the appointment of a uh, board, like what she said, is also covered in our section 316 of the country, mm. that their term of office must be respected whenever mm. you do the appointments, and it must be done uh, above board. So I can say we've got this in our arsenal mm. as parliament mm. to administer the issue of uh, public finance in parastatals.
Well, viewers, this was amazing conversation. This is just the beginning of many to come because I think we're privileged to lead these conversations, but I think also we have uh, had the, the Parliament of Zimbabwe actually coming uh, with us having this conversation. I think it's important that as citizens, we take part in the management of, of, of uh, revenue, in the management of expenditure, in contributing uh, to be part of everything that's going on. Until next time on Identities, have a good one. Thank you.